Welcome back, everyone. This is the State of the Nation. Now, Sri Lanka was uh, affected quite severely by a virus not visible to the naked eye. I think two years in a row, the infamous coronavirus. It spread worldwide with no discrimination of caste, creed, nationality, ethnicity, living standard, or even geographical location. But there is another virus that has been spreading very covertly. It's not visible to the naked eye, at least first. But its symptoms are quite fatal. This virus, however, primarily affects developing countries such as Sri Lanka. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not health related. Actually, it's worse. The virus is known as neoliberal economics. One of the institutions promoting this school of thought is the IMF and the lo loyal slaves of the IMF in Sri Lanka, aka the Colombo liberals, took the baton and ran with it. Whatever they say flies by them, very, very blindly. Naturally, I cannot turn a blind eye even when it's hard for you to hear what I say. However, we all need to expose the lie that is being pushed on countries such as ours with leaders who are blindfolded, uh, blindfoldedly willing to buy into any rhetoric that is being pitched by West without even simply asking the question, hey, did you guys do the same when you were an emerging economy? As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, these economic theories pushed on us are not geared to solve our issues and make our nation wealthy. Instead, it allows us to be bigger beggars while countries that, that are dictating this nonsense thrives. Well, joining me now via Zoom from Amsterdam in the Netherlands is Distinguished Research Fellow at the University College London, Professor Steve Keen. Professor Keen is also the author of Debunking Economics, a must read for all of you who wants to know the truth about um, this BS being pushed on countries like Sri Lanka. Thank you very much, Professor, for your time. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak to me. Now, the IMF uh, for 17 times has been uh, talking about balancing the budget deficit. But we see that in countries like the US itself, they, are, they have a huge budget deficit. So what are they hiding from us, Professor? And what are we doing wrong when we are being told that the most important thing is to balance the budget? Well, well, Mahesh, it's, it, you made the point that most of countries have had a, a deficit. And if you look at, for example, at America, America's average deficit for the last 120 years is 2.5% of GDP. Even if you take the wars out, when there's enormous government spending, of course, during First and Second World War, it's 1.7% of GDP. So the standard situation for most countries is to run a, a, a deficit on the government spending. And the reason that is actually functional works, you know, it, it's, it's part of why American economies has succeeded is because that actually creates money. When the government spends more than it takes back in taxation, it's putting more money to people's bank accounts than it's taking out of their bank accounts. So the money supply grows and that enables domestic activity to expand. Now, you, your real danger is that that expansion of the money supply can go into one of two things, either inflation, which governments are you're always trying to control, or it can go into imports, and therefore the benefit of your expanding money supplies to expand somebody else's economy and not yours. So, by conventional economists get this wrong by frankly not understanding money. This might sound crazy because people think economists must be experts on money because economics is about money, but conventional economists convince themselves that money is irrelevant. They leave money out of their model, they talk about the money illusion and say so you shouldn't consider the actual amount of money, uh, and, and then that problem gets in the way. So their advice to you is not to do what they, their economies have done empirically, but to do what their theory says is right, and in fact their theory is wrong. What you should be trying to focus upon is your trade deficit, not your government deficit. Indeed, indeed, it, it makes a lot of sense. Now, Professor, there are many failed economic theories worldwide that Western governments are pushing on countries like Sri Lanka, especially the neoliberal economic theories currently infested infesting our, our nation. Clearly, it won't bring the results we expect. So for a country like Sri Lanka, how should we think about our economy and what should we be doing right now? Well, again, I think the, the most important thing is that you, 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 you obviously you need to develop your infrastructure, develop your technological capabilities and industries and so on. And the most, the biggest danger you face, this is a common danger for third world countries, is that you uh, end up importing large amounts of foreign goods in that process and you're in a trade deficit. 
And I believe the trade deficit is the main issue you need to focus upon. Now, what do you therefore say, well, how do you reduce the trade deficit? Well, part of that could be, for example, in controls and imports. Now, that's the last thing conventional economists are going to agree to. So what happens is there is a potential mechanism. You, you say the real danger is your trade deficit, which is why you have to borrow foreign money and then you've got to pay, you've got to repay foreign money uh, with export income, which means you therefore have to put more input into exports and less into domestic production and so on. All these things up, end up crimping your capacity to build your own industrial capacity over time. And when, when economists who actually look at the empirical data, people like Danny Roddick, uh, who's a, a good mainstream economist, Reutig has looked at it and said most countries who succeeded in industrialising, like South Korea and Japan and, uh, and and even Germany, did it by prevent, protecting their economies initially using trade barriers to ensure that their money creation went to domestic rather than international suppliers and then put pressure on those suppliers to become internationally competitive over time. So that gave them very efficient industries. So things like Samsung, evolved out of that sort of policy in South Korea. That's what you should be doing, but economists will not even contemplate anything that might control the trade deficit and their anti-import uh, controls and so on. Those are the things I think you should be actually considering, the things economists won't let you do. Absolutely. Uh, now, Professor, austerity is another financial strategy implemented in Sri Lanka, saying that it will help us overcome our current predicament. Does it work? No, austerity is a, is a stupid policy. In fact, the best country to see how bad austerity is is the United Kingdom because the United Kingdom has been practicing austerity really for the last 15 years. And over that 15 years, the rate of growth of the UK has been below that of virtually every other country in the OECD and certainly every other country in Europe. So what austerity does is say that let, what, what austerity translates to for the economy is let's create less government money. And so with less government money, people are more likely to borrow from the private sector. So you're going to have an increase in private debt you will get speculative bubbles coming out of that. You won't get much real investment occurring. And there's less money in turnover, so people are less likely to be able to invest out of working capital. So you actually end up crippling your capacity to grow over time. And as I said, austerity is saying the government should run a surplus. That means the government should take money out of circulation. How is the economy supposed to grow when you're reducing the amount of money? So austerity is a stupid policy. The only country that's followed it consistently in Europe is the one that's performed the worst. And when you take a look at the relationship between the scale of government deficit and the rate of economic growth, the correlation is positive, the high, up to a certain point. But certainly you want to run a deficit to enable the private sector to have the money to do ordinary commerce and to enable people to invest out of cash flow rather than having to borrow from the financial sector when they're more likely to end up speculating on asset prices with that money than actually investing. So austerity is a, is a bad policy informed by bad theory. Indeed, uh, a lot of food for thought. Thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate, Professor, uh, you speaking to us. Uh, that was Distinguished Research Fellow at the University College London, Professor Steve King. Uh, let's take a short commercial break. This is the State of the Nation. Back in a moment.